guys, it's me, Miss Levy, and here we are, Chapter 2, Key Issue 3, Population Pyramids, and we're going to discuss population pyramids, what they are, how they get the shape, and how each pyramid um, is connected, and how the demographic transition model, the stages in the model, each have a distinctive population pyramid. Okay, so let's take a look at what we're going to learn here. We're going to learn is what is a population pyramid and how is it organized? What do different pyramids at different stages of the DTM look like? That's the demographic transition model. What characteristics are present within a country with certain population pyramids? So let's take a look specifically. So here we are. Why is population increasing at different rates? Population pyramids are also called age sex pyramids. And this is really a bar graph, a series of bar graphs showing up places age and sex composition for one year. So again, this is a one year snapshot of the population of a country comparing male versus female for a given age cohort group. The shape of the pyramid is determined mainly by the crude birth rate. So the crude birth rate does determine the shape of that pyramid and that's because the youngest part of the population is at the bottom of the pop of, of the population pyramid. So um, it goes up in, in five-year cohort groups. So those of your population who are zero to five years of age are at the bottom of the uh, lowest um, bottom of the population pyramid. So the crude birth rates are represented there at the bottom. And that crude birth rate, the bottom, dictates what that shape of the pyramid is going to look like. Your age dependency distribution, this is your dependency ratio, your sex distribution, this is your sex ratio. Let's talk about your dependency ratio. This is the number of people who are too young or too old to work in your population compared to the number of people in their productive years, or so they workers. So it's people who are dependents too old or too young to work compared to the working age people of your population. And what this looks like is, is um, those who are 0 to 4, 14, are dependents. These are the people who are too young to work. People who are 65 and older are dependents. These are people who are too old to work. People who are 15 to 64, these are considered your working age of your population. To calculate your dependency ratio, you take your number of dependents, people who are 0 to 15, and those who are 65 and older, and you divide them by your number of working age, people who are 16 to 64 in your population. And then you multiply this by 100. And what this gives you is um, if you have a high dependency ratio, that means that um, you have a high number of dependents compared to your workers. And that can be on the young end or the old end. And that means you're going to have a hard time as a country providing enough services for your dependents because you don't have enough workers. Next, let's take a look at, these are um, dependency ratios uh, in on the young, too young, on the young uh, dependency ratio. These are your people who are under the age of 15. And this is usually shown as a percentage of the total population. And you can see that our countries that are less developing countries in the world will tend to have a very young population, a very high youth dependency ratio. And our less developed countries in the world we see are in West Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, Central and Southern Africa. Here in some of the countries in Central America, Haiti, a couple countries in South America, um, this is Bolivia, um, and then we have over here Yemen, we have um, Pakistan and Afghanistan here, we have Bangladesh, we have Cambodia and Laos. These are less developed countries in the world. And these countries are going to have the highest group birth rates, the highest natural increase rates, highest total fertility rates, highest infant mortality rates, but they're also going to have very high um, youth dependency ratios. On the opposite end, you will see those countries that have really low youth dependency ratios. Those are more developed countries, and they have a different issue. So these countries with high youth dependency ratios, they, don't, they have a lot, a very young population, a large young population, 
but not a lot of workers. So it's going to be very hard for them to provide enough education, health care, and services for all those young people. Next, let's talk about our sex ratio. Um, this is the number of males per 100 females in a country. In general, more males are born than females in the world in a year. Uh, males have higher um, death rates, though. So while there are more males born, they do have higher death rates. Example here would be Europe and North America. So this is really when we, we don't mean North America, we mean Anglo-America. That's Canada and the United States. They are 95 men for every 100 women because a more developed country has a higher life expectancy. That means you're going to have a lot more older women because men die younger than women do. Um, and so we have more women than we do men in our more developed countries. The rest of the world, you have 102 men to every 100 women. Excuse me. So in developing and less developed countries, they have a large uh, percentage of their young people, um, large percentage of the population of young people, where ma males generally outnumber females, and a lower percentage of their population are older people, where females are typically more numerous. Um, but they do have high immigration, meaning that a lot of their young men do end up migrating out of their country to other surrounding countries that are more developed than they are, hoping to find jobs for economic purposes, hoping to find higher paid jobs. So that does lower their population. Let's talk about population pyramids. So population um, composition on a graph is a population pyramid. Males are on the left side, females are on the right. And um, you go, it, it is divided in five-year cohort groups with the youngest being at the bottom of the pyramid and the oldest being at the top. So the youngest cohort group is zero to five years old. That means you're very, your youngest infants to five-year-old. And then the next one is five to 10-year-old. And then the next layer is 10 to 15. And then the next layer is 15 to 20. And so what this means is that your crude birth rates, zero to five, are represented there at the bottom of the graph, and that's what shapes um, the actual population pyramid. So a country stage in the demographic transition model will have its own distinct population structure or our age sex pyramid. So each stage has a very distinct um, population pyramid. So you can see, take a look at these different shapes. Here's a stage two pyramid, um, which is a less developed country, a very poor country. Here's a stage three pyramid, which is a developing country. Um, and then here's a short stage four pyramid, which is an MDC, really wealthy country, really rich country. And you can see, look at the different shapes here. Stage two country will be much more triangular. You have a fat bottom, skinny middle, skinny top. And that's because you have high crew birth rate, and you're representing here a declining natural increase, I mean, a declining death rate expanding natural increase rate here you can see like this is a real wide bottom but they still have a low life expectancy so you don't see a lot of older people in this population so you can see fat bottom skinny middle skinny top and that's because you don't have a high life expectancy and so not a lot of people are living until um, older ages here you can see look how much this this bumps in drastically at 35, 40 years old. Next, you can see again, here's that crude birth rate down here at the bottom. Look how big that birth rate is compared to the other ones. Um, this is a really big crude birth rate. Next is stage three. Um, you can see that in stage three, you start to see a declining crude birth rate. Your death rate's still declining, but not as much as what is happening here in um, your stage two, and then you start to see a declining natural increase rate. Um, so this, this becomes more bell-shaped. So you can see our pyramid is more of a bell shape here. And that is because we have, uh, the bottom is shrinking, still big, but it's shrinking, an expanding middle and an expanding top. As that natural increase rate, um, as it starts to decline, and they have higher life expectancy, you see more older people living longer. Look at the difference here between our age groups and people who are alive in stage two compared to stage three. 
you see those advancements in real time. So this is more bell-shaped here. Here's our stage four country. This one's actually declining. So um, a stage four country can either be barely growing here, so barely bumping out, very slow growth like we would see in the United States in our pyramid. You would see it barely bumping out, but real small bottom, but barely bumping out on the bottom, representing still slow growth. And then wide middle, wide top, which represents that um, high life expectancy. You could also be completely rectangular, which would be zero growth. Or you could be coming in like this one is inverted triangle almost. <clears throat> Excuse me, inverted triangle. This is a negative population growth. This one is shrinking. All right, rapid growth. Here's Philippines, um, stage two country. You can see, look at that fat bottom. Skinny middle, skinny top, representing huge crude birth rate. Starting to see that death rates declining real high natural increase rate, but still real low life expectancy. Large number of young people and a smaller older population, really high youth dependency ratio here. Here's our slow growth, like I was talking about with the United States. You see we're still bumping out here on the bottom, just barely. That's a slow growth stage four country, but we have a large number of older people, high, um, older you older dependency ratio small number of younger people so future population problems likely but this is a high older dependency ratio this is stage four united states no growth you see that this is the upper end this is germany um and you can see that this is starting to be really rectangular here really rectangular all right here are some examples of um what happens and population change and you can see different events will shape what your um, that that cohort group of that population uh, looks like you can see here's the Great Depression you can see that we saw it really shrink there come in there because it had a lot of deaths there um, again this is just examples of our pyramids this would be more of that rectangular shape I was just talking to you about where um, you can see that it's it is this is a no growth, and then you see this one's starting to come in on the bottom, invert in the bottom. That's a negative growth here, pyramid. All right, let's take a look at these specific. Um, and with this is subregional. These are cities in the United States. You can see, take a look at this one. Really high number of males from the age of 20 to uh, four. 40, 45, and this is in Alaska. This represents uh, where there are um, mining and a lot of oil jobs. So this is like a very male-dominated jobs where you see a lot of men moving there to work. So if you see this huge number, this is either a guest worker program or um, you may see that it might be a military base or you see that this is more male-dominated. Here's Cedar Rapids, Iowa. You can see that there are a lot of people between the ages of 20 and uh, 35 who are living there in Cedar Rapids. Um, this is um, this is where you might see this might be colleges, universities there in Cedar Rapids, or they're just a lot of younger people who are moving there in Iowa and the surrounding area to get better jobs. Here's Honolulu. You can see we have a large um, military bases there in Honolulu. So this represents this middle part. You can see Honolulu, they've got very low birth rates. Um, Gary, Indiana, you can see that this has a really high, um, they had some high birth rates, but now you can see they're starting to decline here. Naples, Florida, look at this inverted triangle. That's because there's so many older people living in Naples. Um, and the bottom is Laredo, Texas, uh, where you see really high crude birth rates as well, growing population. Again, this is just the same. Um, this is in Lawrence, Kansas. This is where KU is, Kansas University, University of Kansas. Look at that. That's what Gainesville would look like, too. Um, you see that's a huge college town. All right, let's sum it up. Three examples, Cape Bird. High growth, stage two, Chile, moderate growth, stage three, 
did mark low growth stage four. All right, thanks guys.